Now that you've had a go at preparing your project schedule, let's take a look at the optimum way to put the schedule together. As you can observe, the initial 63 day schedule has now reduced to a duration of 39 days. It is worth noting that the individual 11 activities are still the same duration as before. The reduction in days is the result of sequencing activities in the schedule. We knew that the first three activities would remain unchanged because they were dependent on a previous activity before they could be undertaken. However, if we take a closer look at the next four activities, activity number four, installing roof frames, number five, plumbing, number six, wiring, and number seven, assembling the external walls, they are activities that can likely be done simultaneously since none of those activities are dependent on the completion of another activity immediately before it. Covering the roof can be done soon after the roof frames are erected, but again, it does not need the plumbing or wiring to be in place before it can be completed. The interior walls and external finishes have their individual timeframes that are dependent on other activities being completed. Looking at the schedule, you can see that the total days are now reduced to the required 39 by completing some activities simultaneously. By reducing the amount of time to complete the project in 39 days, we have been able to fast track the schedule. This means that we have been able to complete the project within a shorter amount of time without adding any additional resources. So let's recap what we have learned about scheduling so far. We have taken a set of activities that are required to complete the building of a house. The next step was to place them in an order that they need to be completed. Once the ordering of activities was in place, we then looked at how we could reduce the amount of time taken to complete the building of the house. In other words, we fast tracked the schedule. Now let's take it a step further. Let's take the situation where one of the stakeholders wants you to complete building the house within 35 days. Reducing the number of days in the schedule for a second time is also known as crashing the schedule. This kind of request, regardless of the project, should raise alarm bells for you. Ideally, the first choice should be for you to say no. Crashing the schedule brings about its own new set of risks that possibly have not been anticipated. However, if saying no to decreasing the schedule is not an option, what are your alternatives? There are two ways to meet the new deadline. The first is to increase the amount of resources used, which will inevitably increase the cost of the project and we will work over our budget. Alternatively, we compromise on the quality of the final project by cutting corners to ensure we meet the new 35 day deadline. We could possibly employ an extra plumber and electrician to reduce the amount of time they spend on their respective activities and perhaps add another resource to help complete the interior and exterior finishes of the house. But this will be over budget. Your decision lies in the initial project outcomes which was to build a house. You need to carefully consider whether you can compromise on quality in this situation or whether you run the risk of being over budget. Regardless of your decision, remember that the project manager is always accountable for any decisions made during the project lifecycle.